Okay, it looks like I am live. So let me get started here. <clears throat> All right, I just want to make sure that everything is good here. I like to make sure that I've got everything all situated here in my, I'm on my phone here and then I'm on my laptop here. So just making sure, say hello when you are here. I am going to get the presentation back up and then we can get rocking and rolling and I will start the recap. All right. Okay, but first, I have to share this first. Let me share my screen. I think I can do this. So hold on here. I think I can go into Facebook and show you guys something absolutely incredible. Okay. So one of my clients who I worked with uh, two years ago, yes, yeah, two years ago, she did my Metabolism Reboot Academy. And then she did some one-on-one -on -one coaching after that. Uh, messaged me the other day and wanted to um, share, you know, just catch up because that's what we do. You know, we, I'm very close with these girls. Anywho, she messaged me the other day. We caught up and I said, okay, well, I want to see some, I want to see your latest uh, pictures. She sent this to me tonight. Look at this. Is this not amazing? So this right here is Cassandra. She is another young lady who has lost a significant amount of weight. So like Kimmy, um, Kimmy with me has lost 77. Cassandra is now at 76. And I know that Christy has lost over a hundred. So, you know, this isn't all just about weight loss and you don't need to have like this significant amount of weight to lose. So what I'm trying to share here is this. All three of those girls started with me in 2017. If there was not permanent change made here, none of those girls would have these types of results. Do you see what I mean? And if I wasn't able to teach them how to listen to their body and their own biofeedback, this would not be happening. Crazy, it's crazy, crazy, crazy. Once you understand the hormones, once you understand your own body, and once you understand what to do, and you have a method and you have a system, this is the kind of results that you are going to get. This is what it is, right? Okay, so huge congratulations to Cassandra. So, Cassandra, if you're watching, all right, so I'm going to mute. Say hello if you are here. Okay, so we're gonna do a recap, guys. Okay, yay. All right, so here we are. So that was Cassandra. Um, I'm just so proud of her and just so happy to share that with you guys because you know what it does? It gives you hope. It gives you hope. So thank you, Cassandra, for sharing that with me, reaching out and for sharing you know, this with others so that other people can actually say like, okay, I can do this too, you know? So this is why pictures are so important. I know a lot of times in, in, in the beginning of when I start working with people, it's one of the worst things for them to experience because they just don't like to look at themselves. And they don't like to see, but it's the best thing because, you know, look at this as a great example, right? Okay, so here we go. So we're going to do a quick recap, you guys. So day one, we talked about, hey, you're in the right place if you're ready to tuck in that chair because you can. Huh? Nothing better than having choices, right? Instead of saying, I can't wear that, you'll say, oh, I can wear this, or hey, I feel like being flowy tonight, or I feel like being fitted tonight. You can because you can. If you're tired of your belly growing larger and you don't know why. If you're tired of not being able to wear a bra without stuff spilling out everywhere, you know what I'm talking about, like underneath the armpits and behind the back. Um, if you're committed to taking action, owning your 100% owning your responsibility for your results, and you're ready to feel amazing naked in snug clothing if you want and be able to shop anywhere, right? 
So here's another example. This is Alicia. She did my September Academy. We're still working together, but this is her results just after three weeks. She had lost six pounds and three inches off of her waist. Look at how her hourglass shape is starting to come back. That's crazy good. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. This is Deb. Still working with Deb, but she did my July, my July Academy. Um, she lost, I think she's at 25 pounds now and over 20 inches. So she was showing me on one of our calls how she was swimming in her shirt. This isn't for you if you're looking for a quick fix. I am not your quick fix, person, quick fix person. I will not give quick fixes. I do not believe in them. Um, somebody asked me yesterday, she said, do you do shakes? And I said, hell no, no. Hey, if somebody wants to do shakes, fine, whatever. If that's what they want and they enjoy that, great. But I am not a shake based lady. Okay. I'm not your quick fix person. I help you to achieve your results so that they are sustainable. Okay. And that you can live your life. Like I have a, a macro coaching client, a gentleman that I'm working with. And he was telling me like how he would lose weight, how he would lose his weight and gain his weight. I'm like, Oh, for God's sakes, you had no life. It was just awful. He was sneaking food into these events. And it was, he said, I didn't want to eat it. And I mean, it was just so bad and you don't want to live that way, you know? <clears throat> All right. Moving on. I'm going to deliver incredible value. Nothing I'm teaching you is based on theory. This is all proven. Okay. The proof is in the pudding. You've seen pictures. You're going to get clarity out of this and understanding around the causes that belly fat keeps, why belly fat keeps most women from maintaining their signature hourglass figure. And this is also going to give you that fire up, that overall kick in the pants that you need to get rid of that belly fat once and for all. Okay. And again, honestly, it's not just belly fat. This is really about overall, you know, it's overall about, about, excuse me, overall body fat, but your belly fat oftentimes around our age tends to start to accumulate. All right, so here we go. Um, how would your life change if you felt more comfortable in your own clothes, but more importantly, your own skin? And you were able to love looking in the mirror again able to feel empowered to make decisions of your own. When you aren't feeling good physically, when you aren't feeling pretty or sexy or hot or whatever the word is that you use put together, oftentimes we tend to be very mousy and, you know, we don't make decisions of our own. We tend to, you know, we don't have the confidence. So we're not chest proud and we're not out there making decisions. We're not assertive. We're just kind of like, let me hide. And I want somebody else to make the decisions for me. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to live my life like that. I don't want to be that person. I don't like to feel unempowered. I don't like it. Doesn't feel good. Okay. Feel more confident than you ever have and feel bathing suit ready all year long. Wouldn't it be great to not live a life that's, oh, I got a vacation in six months. I better start getting on the wagon so that I can, you know, get in my bathing suit and actually feel comfortable and confident. Why? Right? When you don't have to, you don't have to live your life like that. So day one, we're going to cover the two types of belly fat, the hormonal situations and your metabolic blueprint. Okay. So we're going to dive deep into the two different types and why one of them is more difficult to burn the three different practices that you can set in place to help you burn the fat and specific details about your personal metabolic blueprint. Now I'm going to say this was day one, which I did on uh, October 27th. Okay. And uh, there was emails and all these things going out to everybody and all this stuff. So, you know, some of this information might not be pertinent at this moment, but I just want to share this information with you so that you are able to like get, you know, the important science and things like that. Okay. So say hello when you're here. Okay. So body composition changing. Are you feeling confused? Many women are confused about why they are gaining fat around their middle and they should be because they are like, what the hell is going on? Because after all, the typical fat distribution for women is 
to store more in the butt, hips, bust, and thighs, and less in the waist. So there's sometimes people, you know, they their body weight isn't changing, but their mm -hmm. composition is. So like, what in the hell? Like, what is going on? Where did this come from? We're going to talk about that. Why is some fat stubborn and difficult to lose? Unfortunately, some fat like belly fat is very difficult to burn. And this is why, because there's two different types. Okay. You, you have your adrenal, adre I always do this. <laughs> adrenergic. I have to stop and slow down when I say this word, adrenergic receptors. Think alpha and beta. Okay. Just remember that alpha and beta. Alpha, slow fat release. Think anti-burn. Okay. Alpha does not want to burn. Beta, speed fat release. Think B for burn. So we have the alpha and the beta. Okay. In addition to having a direct impact on fat release, these receptors also impact blood flow. Now, the more alpha receptors means less blood flow to an area, and the more beta receptors means greater blood flow to an area, okay? There are two types of belly fat. You have the visceral fat. I think I typed that right. And that has more beta receptors. Remember, B for burn, beta, and greater blood flow. And it's very responsive to diet and exercise, okay? I hate to use that word diet. I use that, like to use that loosely. How about proper nutrition, okay? So there are two types of belly fat, again, like I said. Then there's the, the subcutaneous fat. So this has more alpha, anti and less blood flow, and it's very difficult to burn. I'm gonna to talk to you about the two different things here now. So remember this, that the amount of blood flow to an area is important because fat needs to be released from the cell, move through the bloodstream to get to another cell where it can be ultimately burned. So there's this system, right, that that has to take place in order for, a fat, for fat to be burned. So calories matter. But there is a hormonal situation that determines where fat is stored. And to lose fat, you need to have both a caloric deficit and hormonal balance. Most people are always just thinking on this side, which is, I just got to reduce my calories. I got to exercise more and eat less. Okay, you can do that for a short amount of time, but you also need to balance your hormones, people. That's what people don't recognize. And here's the thing. They don't do it because they don't know about it. And that's why I do what I do. I am here to help you. I'm here to teach you this shit. I'm here to help you finally understand what is going on. I'm teaching you the science. Now, some people, I'm not their person because they don't want to learn. They just want somebody to tell them what to do. They want to skip the hard work and the journey. Well, that's not me. That's why I say, listen, I'm not your quick fix lady. I will teach you. I will walk the journey with you and you will get results, but you have got to go the journey. You have to go down the path. You have to get uncomfortable. There's just no way around it. No way around it. Okay. So to lose stubborn fat, particularly stubborn belly fat, you need to understand the hormones that are involved. And in women, it's insulin, cortisol, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Here's the thing. People think, oh, balance my hormones. Okay, estrogen and progesterone. They're not even thinking about estrogen, excuse me, they're not even thinking about insulin and cortisol and testosterone. Now, if you've done any of my other um, series, you've seen me talk about the hormonal, hier hormonal hierarchy. And the hormonal hierarchy, estrogen and progesterone, they're not big, huge players. Insulin, cortisol, these are the big players, okay? All right. So hormones are like humans, depending on the situation that they're in, meaning who is around, who they're dancing with is going to determine how they're going to act, what is going to ultimately happen. So for example, as a human, we act differently when we go to a black tie event than when we go to a toga party. Toga party, we're like, woo, we're standing on the chairs or woohoo, and we're drinking beer out of a bong, you know, probably eating hot dogs and burgers and all that stuff. And then at the black tie, we are refined. We have our best manners out. We are, you know, we're feeling elegant and we are acting a certain way, right? So there's two different dynamics that we have going on, two different situations. Humans 
are, you know, cells are this, or excuse me, hormones are the same way as humans. So it just depends on who's around. So estrogen is going to act different when insulin's around, you know what I mean? And cortisol and insulin and all that. So when you've got this different dynamic going on, different things are going to happen. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So insulin, it is a fat storing hormone. It impairs the normal function of beta receptors. But here's the thing. Insulin oftentimes gets a bad rap, but insulin is kind of like your best friend and your worst enemy at the same time. Um, because insulin is also very good for muscle, um, um, building. Okay. So it is a building hormone builds fat, builds muscle. Okay. So cortisol associated with stress, more stress reactive women, meaning reactive, meaning that your body reacts in a negative way towards cortisol. Generally these, these women, I can categorize them easily like menopausal and people with PCOS release more cortisol and have higher amounts of belly fat, whether they are thin or overweight. So if you were menopausal, if you were someone who has um, PCOS, you are probably wondering like, why do I have this extra, okay? Um, you're, you are very reactive to stress. You're very sensitive to it. So estrogen balance is imperative, okay? So it's largely responsible for how fat is just distributed, 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 distri distributed. <laughs> God. I'm talking like, I feel like I had alcohol or something um, on women makes you more insulin sensitive, which means excess calories are less likely to be stored as belly fat. So let me just say this one more time. Cause I kind of went through that a little bit fast. Estrogen is largely responsible for how fat is distributed. Why can't I say that distributed? Thank you. On women it makes you in more insulin sensitive. So what this is saying is, is that when you have more estrogen around that when you are eating more excess calories, like let's say you have more carbohydrates and such when you are more estrogen dominant. So I think I have talked with you before about your menses, your cycle, the first half of your cycle, you are more estrogen dominant. So therefore you can have more calories and things like that. So if you are somebody that is like a person that likes to go to the gym and things like that, you can plan your workouts around your menstrual cycle so that you can actually work on lifting heavier, doing more powerful things during that first half of your cycle, because the estrogen is going to be in your favor because you can also intake more carbohydrates. And I know that that gets a little sciencey. We kind of went off off the, the rails here, but just to kind of give you an example. So I hope that that made sense to you. Um, but you could always message me for questions on that. So progesterone has an indirect influence on belly fat due to its relationship with cortisol. So remember, like I said, what's dancing around each other will depend on what's going on. It opposes the fat storing action that cortisol has on the belly. So in other words, it protects you from gaining as well. So when cortisol and progesterone are together, Progesterone is going to protect you from that cortisol, like a, for, a firewall, okay? Testosterone, okay? The testosterone to estrogen ratio is crucial for women, okay? So women with higher levels of testosterone, like those with PCOS, have thicker waist. Now, for example, women that are menopausal, you still have your estrogen and your progesterone, but at this point, they're not a heavy hitter, your testosterone is. So oftentimes their testosterone is a more dominant hormone over the progesterone and estrogen. So this is why your waist gets thicker. Make sense? Okay. So again, I just, I just forgot that I put it here, menopausal women as well, because the testosterone levels are typically dominant over the estrogen uh, progesterone. Why am I having a hard time talking? <laughs> I did have some coffee. I do have some coffee here. You guys, I think I had shared this with you that when I am in like a series mode, I'm very coffee oriented. When I'm not doing a series, I don't, yeah, I just realized this a couple weeks ago. I go in and out with coffee. I'm very in and out with it. But I recognize that there is a habit loop with me and coffee. And I found it. And it is when I am doing presentations. It's like 
it's like it helps me get into a flow of creation. I don't know, it's really weird. So again, this is something that I teach in my program about habit loops and triggers and such. So it was really interesting how I was able to find like a trigger and a habit loop of, habit loop of my own. Okay. Stick with me because this is really important here. Female formula for belly fat, meaning this is what you don't want. It's insulin and cortisol times testosterone minus estrogen equals belly fat. So we're going to break this down again. Insulin and cortisol combined with excess testosterone and low estrogen equals belly fat. Now, let me break this down for you again. Fat plus sugar and or starch, meaning a starchier carbohydrate, times stress equals belly fat. Fat plus sugar, also known as starch as well, times stress equals belly fat. Make sense? So give me one if that makes sense, okay? So when stress is added to a diet that is heavy in starches, fats and sugars, you are in big trouble. Doesn't mean that you can't have these things. It just means that we need to control some of these things. Stress releases cortisol and cortisol added to insulin is the most problematic hormonal combination for belly fat, okay? Stress also increases hunger, which can lead to constant cravings and set you up for physiology that is more likely to lose muscle. We do not want that. If you are somebody that says, I just keep gaining weight year after year after year, there is a good chance that your body is every single year losing muscle. There is a calculation or formula. I'm going to have to get that and put it in. I'll post it in the group. I want to say it's like after so many years, oh, I can see it, but I can't, I can't clarify what it says, but an average person, I want to say over so many, like maybe two years time will end up gaining 15 pounds. I'll get that. And I'll post it for you guys. Ultimately can lead to weight loss resistance, meaning that your body does not want to lose weight. And that's not a situation that you want to find yourself in because it's inevitable. Maybe you were already there. Maybe you're already stuck. So again, the hormones are like, uh, like the humans, you know, they are going to act differently depending on who they're around and what the situation is going on. So your personal metabolic blueprint. Okay. So do you see now why it is so important and why meal plans don't work? You know, the, the thing is, is that again, I mentioned it earlier that meal plans, they're just, you know, people will say, well, does it come, does it come with a meal plan? Do I get a meal plan? They only want that because they don't want to figure out. They don't want to do the work. They don't want to, they want to try and bypass that. Now it's not going to help you. If you are somebody that has done meal plans in the past and here you are again, you know, so stop seeking the things that don't work. That's the thing is I always tell people, why would you go back to doing that when it didn't work in the first place? <laughs> you know, it's what people do all the time. So there's three practices that you can start now, which is relax, prioritize your sleep and your carbohydrate tipping point. And when, when I talk about the carbohydrate tipping point, it had everything to do with, I had provided um, a little quiz that people could take. And then they had a plate that they were following for the last, I don't know, since the 27th. So a good 10 days or so. Now, um, some of you that had been using the plate, I know have found it very helpful. There is a good chance that you've had more energy, that you have less cravings, that you have lost some weight. Um, you know, the carbohydrate tipping point is super, super important. And that is something that I help my clients with. So in my, um, and this is, I went over this quiz with them because this, once they take the quiz, there was three different things that they could fall under, which is either insulin dominant, a blended, a blended burner or a stress dominant burner. And out of the three, they were given a specific plate. So an insulin dominant person, they are somebody that mainly is, you know, they, they really crave the carbohydrates. They're generally a person that, you know, has a big desire for food, um, a blended burner. And let me go back to insulin. Your body is basically leaning towards burning sugar and in, instead of fat. And we don't want that, right? The blended burner has more of a balance. 
you know, cause your body is burning all fuels at all times. But when you find yourself in this type of a situation, like a stress or an insulin dominant, then you really need to shift out of those because your body is not doing what you really need and want it to do. So like a stress dominant individual, their body is going to lean more towards um, burning their muscle. And what did I just talk about a moment ago? The more muscle that you burn, the less um, able you are going to be able to lose weight, <clears throat> excuse me, and the more fat that you're going to accumulate over time. Okay. So blend, you want to try to work your way into being a blended burner, which means that you have more of, of a balance with, you know, what you got going on in your body. Okay. So let me go back to, oh, here we go. This is the the plates that I had given everybody. So the one on the left, I should have had the two on the ends mixed, like reversed. But the one over here was for your insulin dominant. The one over here was for your stress dominant. And the one in the middle was your mixed. So that was the plate that they were given. And this is the plate that they had worked off of for the last 10 days or so. This is an actual tool that my clients use um, as well. And so again, you know, my, my program is a lot more than just the nutrition. There's a lot of the mindset piece that goes on because I want them to have sustainable results. And the mindset is a huge thing. Okay, so let's move on to day two. So that was day one. Any questions that you have, just let me know. Um, but day two <clears throat> was your personal preferences, your perceptions and psychology and what you are focusing on. Okay, so we're going to go here and we're going to talk about this. So most people think, what do I do now? And they panic if they don't have a meal plan. What do I do? I don't have a meal plan. Ah! I'm going to say it again. You don't need a meal plan. In fact, you do not want a meal plan. <sighs> because in their mind, they have this belief. There's only one way of eating if I want to lose weight. I'm, I'm perfect. And I'm eating all clean and healthy whole foods. Or I'm a total shit show. Wah, 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 wah. And then they find themselves in between these two things. And it's like, that is the most stressful life to live. I lived it for a long time, not anymore. So they think in order for them to get results, everything has to be good. I got to eat good. Got to have all the vegetables, all the fresh this. Da, da, da. I can't have a cookie because God forbid that is bad. So everything is good and bad. You know what I mean? Good means according to my beliefs that that means I'm good and I'm perfect and I did it right. But then if they have a freaking bite of something, it's like, oh my God, all hell breaks loose. They're a loser. I've ruined everything. I got to start over on Monday. I did it for years. Trust me, I did it for more than half of my life. So bad means the pizza, the fries, the donuts and all this stuff. Now let's just get real here. We live in America, people. For you to think that you're never going to eat or have a bite of one of those bad foods that you consider that's in that category is unrealistic. It's ridiculous. So I help you to find that balance. So for most people, they think, well, bad beans, according to my beliefs, that there's no results and I am bad. I am bad, bad, bad. Can you relate to that? If you do, give me a one. So meal plans steal the journey. And I said that early on. The journey is where the transformation takes place, people. It's the journey. Because you know what happens? You start to recognize like, oh my God, that was a really screwball thought I just had. Or, oh my God, that I was eating pretzels for my snack. And holy shit, now I realize that they are what was making me tired. Or they are the, are the thing that was actually making me crave more carbs later. Or, oh my God, every time I you know, it's three o'clock, I want a donut and coffee. And, you know, it's, it's because you are starting to learn your habits. You're starting to learn these behaviors. You're starting to learn these kinds of things that you never thought of before because nobody made you, nobody made you pay attention to this stuff. You had no idea. You don't know what you don't know. There's blind spots. We all have blind spots, right? So this is why it's good to put yourself in a position around 
someone that can say, hey, listen, what about this? Did you think about that? Did you see this? Did you see that? Did you pay attention to this? Pay attention to that? So the journey is where the transformation takes place. Food should be few, viewed as fuel. No food group should be demonized or off limits. And always ask yourself, how is this food going to affect me hormonally? Is this going to give me energy later? Is this going to make me tired? Am I going to crave more? Is it, am I going to feel bloated? Am I going to, you know, like there's all of these things that, that you need to keep in mind when you're eating food. So your nutrition, your daily nutrition should have abundance of your own personal preferences, not because there's a list of something that somebody gave you of their own personal preferences that worked for them. That just seems really silly. Don't you think? Think about it. Isn't that just silly? It would be like if I told you to eat, you know, like I'm trying to think what I eat. I'm like, okay, so for breakfast, I want you to have a slice of gluten-free toast and 20 grams of egg whites and one whole egg. And then I want you to have some snap peas. And then I want you to have some um, chicken that's, that's put in the Instant Pot. And you're going to wrap that in a low carb wrap. And you're going to put some hot sauce on it. And right? Like you'd be like, I don't want that. I don't even fucking like eggs. Ew. You know what I mean? So you have to find the things that work for you, my friend. You have to find the things that work for you. I'm a big breakfast eater. You might want to puke. If I told you tomorrow, hey, on my meal plan, you got to eat six meals starting tomorrow. You'd be like, what? <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I'll do it for the next five weeks. Okay. Oh, but then you're thinking like, oh my God, I can't wait till this is over. I cannot wait until this five weeks is over. Isn't that nutball when you think about that? How many times have you been on something and you just couldn't wait until the last day so that you could binge on something or you could finally have something that you weren't allowed to have? If we think about it like that, doesn't that just seem crazy? Or am I crazy? <laughs> All right, moving on. So your, your plate, my friend, should be filled with your own personal preferences, the things that you like things you enjoy. Nothing should be off limits. Like, here we go. Here's my, my dear friend, Erin. She's now at 11 pounds lost as of this past week. And I think 10 inches, nothing's off limits. She made a post that said, I can eat brownies and ice cream and still lose pounds and inches. I'm amazed. And so very grateful feeling so much more energetic and joyful. You don't, I don't know why she's feeling joyful because she doesn't have any foods that are off limits. She doesn't have foods that are off limits. You know what I'm saying? She just, you, you got to have a balance. Okay. So this here is just a model. This is an NLP model. I'm an NLP coach, which means neuro list, neuro, neuro linguistic programming. Okay. So this has everything to do with your, your subconscious mind, your beliefs and your operating system. So here's an example. So you've got the external event over here on the far right. Okay, so your visual. So let's say we are in a visual event, or you've got your other senses, which is your auditory, which is sound, kinesthetics, which is feel, olfactory and gustatory, which is smell and taste. Okay, so then it, it runs through a filter of ours, right? So we have our values, our beliefs, we have the meta programs, which is we delete, we distort, and we generalize. Okay, and then we it goes through these past decisions and memories that we had. So then we end up putting this internal representation of it. So we apply an internal representation. An internal representation is like a story or a movie that we make in our head because our mind is all about pictures and symbols. If I told you to not think of a blue tree, it's impossible because in order for you to not think of the blue tree, you have to think of the blue tree. It just is how our brain works just is what it is. Okay. So your internal representation then creates a state of mind. Now, let me just tell you, this is one of the reasons why this is one of the reasons why people get caught in the same old trap because they have this internal representation that creates this state of mind, which then creates a physiology, like a feeling and all these things that go on, which then creates the emotion behavior then your choice, and then that affects your outcome. 
So if you're finding yourself in the same story, different year, I just can't seem to lose this weight. I just don't know what to do. I just, oh my God, ah, you know what I mean? Part of the problem is it has to do what's going on in your mind. So you might see somebody that's lost a tremendous amount of weight. And then you see that same person gain a tremendous amount of weight. A lot of it has to do with the fact that this was never dealt with. They were never, they never got into the story that they constantly, that was running in their, the back of their mind. The, the story, the belief system, it became their truth, which became their particular fact, right? So it's kind of like this, like we all have different, we all have different representations when it comes to things, right? So it'd be wrong for me to place expectation on you. It's wrong for Sally Sue to place expectation on somebody else, meaning that I cannot expect for you to see things the same way that I do. Why? Because of our filters, because of our own experiences, our memories, all of those things. So we all have this own personal internal representation. So all I'm trying to, to share here is that your thoughts and your thinking, your belief systems, your operating system that you are operating under currently has so much to do with an influential adult that you were around in your past. So like, I find that I do things that, you know, my parents did, but I never realized or made a choice consciously that I was going to do that. It's something that was subconsciously in my operating system that was picked up from when I was a child from age zero to seven. Your subconscious mind is seven years old. So anything from age zero to seven is where your subconscious mind was really absorbing all of these things, okay? So I'm gonna talk to you about this really quick. We're just gonna do a science class, so bear with me. You have your RAS, kind of talked about this briefly. <laughs> it's your reticular activating system, which is located in your brain. And it filters down the 2.3 billion bits per second that we are being given through those senses that I shared, okay? down to 126 bits per second. So let me just break this down for just a second. I want you to think of, of 2.3 billion toothpicks, okay? So your subconscious mind is recording, okay, 2.3 bits per second. So think of like 2.3 billion toothpicks, but your conscious mind is only getting 126 of those toothpicks. Isn't that nuts? It's nuts. So what I'm trying to tell you is that there is this operating system that's going on back here that is, you know, controlling us or, you know, operating us, but we're only aware of 126 of it. Net nuts. So I hope that that makes sense to you because I, I hope that it creates awareness, like, so that you understand that some of what you're doing and some of the way that you react or respond to things you may not be consciously aware of it. It may be from when you were a child, okay? So again, these filters include the beliefs, the values, the identity, the mood, the time, all of these things as well, all right? So just wanted to bring that awareness. And this is why a lot of my program has a lot to do with your mindset. This is why I became an NLP coach because I realized like this is the major shit that people need to work through oftentimes so that they're like, oh my God, now it all makes so much sense. When you have awareness, it's gonna help you you make better choices. Okay. So you've heard me talk about the emotional cycle of change. Half of the world lives between phase one and phase three. Phase one is the, I call it the dopamine hit. Woo! We're starting something new on Monday. I'm so excited. Yeah. You know, some people are so addicted to that starting over. They're just addicted to, you know, they're always going to start something new because it feels good. They don't have the awareness. They don't have like, they, they're not visualizing some of the difficulties that they have to go through. They're just thinking about their ultimate outcome. Right. But when they start to, you know, embark on this journey, they get down to phase two and they're like, okay, is this really worth it? Oh, I just, oh, I don't know. It says, oh, you know, because oftentimes they are going by a rule book and they have these restrictions. So of course it's going to feel like it's not worth it. And phase three is where it gets really uncomfortable. And this is an uncomfortable hallway that most people, that everybody needs to walk through in order to get to that other side that needs to get like Christy, who's lost 105 pounds, Cassandra, who's lost 76. 
six and Kimmy who's lost 77 and Deb who's lost 25 and Alicia who's so far lost six and you know Kathy who's lost 25 already and that's two years ago as well and Donna who's lost 35 I mean I could go on and on and on and I could name off clients names who have walked through the hallway and are now over on that success side right they stopped starting over this is the catalyst to the start over syndrome. Half of the world is over here between phase one and phase three. They're always starting something new and they're never moving over here in the world of fulfillment. Like Christy, she's now going to be a personal trainer. You know what I mean? Kimmy's life is completely changed and different. You know, it's, it's like, that's why I do what I do. It's, this is not just about weight loss. This is about changing your life. This is about getting rid of the shit so that you can start to finally be empowered and actually move your life in the direction that you desire for it to go instead of being on that same damn hamster wheel and having the weight of your of your weight the weight of your weight constantly always in the back of your mind you know i feel miserable i can't tuck in a shirt i feel like shit. i'm bloated i'm fat you know all that stuff because that's all you're focused on how can you focus on you know a, a whole new journey in your life if you're focusing on the weight that you can't lose you're not empowered you feel like shit. you have no energy so this over here is never going to happen until we clean up this over here and we finally walk through phase three. That's what I help you do is walk through that uncomfortable hallway. Okay, so I hope that that makes sense. All right, moving forward. <laughs> so we have the autonomic nervous system, which is your sympathetic and your parasympathetic, which means that your sympathetic is your stress mode and then your parasympathetic is your rest and digest. So this is your nervous system that is seesawing all day long between these two. Now, most people though, if you see the seesaw are on the side of the stress, they're always in the sympathetic mode. You know, they don't recognize it. You know, they're like constantly running and go, go, go. They um, are not eating properly. They're not sleeping properly. They're, exer they're exercising more and eating less. They're sacrificing sleep for exercise because they think that that's what they're supposed to do. And, but in essence, all they're doing is damaging their metabolism. Everything is backfiring. But over here, which is the parasympathetic, we, if we had more of a balance between the two, you would be more in alignment with having a more balanced metabolism and able to release weight, so on and so forth, okay? So which one are you? Option one or two? So option one, okay? This is what comes with this life. Procrastinator, which actually means I'm looking for the perfect time. You're perfectionist, always on a diet, exercising more, eating less, quick fixes, pills, shakes, you name it. You get the shiny ball syndrome. Soon as Susie loses five pounds, you're wondering, what is she doing? I want to do what she's doing. Okay. All right. Let me go over here. Then Sally loses five pounds. Oh, let me do that. Oh, then Susie over. Oh, she's at 10 pounds. Now I'm going back to that. Sound like you? Your choices feel restricted. Indulgences come with guilt and like you're bad. You're always sliding between phases one and three. You're constantly on and off the wagon. There's a whole community waiting for you because I betcha if you go to work, Sally's gonna say, you were bad too. Oh, me too, I fell off. Okay, you too, me too. Oh, I feel so much better. Let's start over together on Monday. Okay, let's be accountability partners. That sound good? Oh, I feel so much better, I'm not alone, right? Constantly in fight or flight, which is damaging metabolism. It's the ideal situation for fat storing. Option two, okay, this is when you're over on that, you've walked to the hallway, you're living a lifestyle according to your own personal preferences, you're mindful of your choices, you're at peace with your indulgences, you feel in alignment, you're living a life beyond that valley of despair, you're living a life moving forward, continuing to achieve goals other than diet goals, because you, you, you don't care about that diet shit anymore. Weight loss just becomes a byproduct of all these amazing stacked habits that you have been conquering and maintaining and being consistent with. You are in more of the rest and digest mode. You are more in alignment. Your metabolism is in alignment for the ideal situation for losing fat. And you are able to maintain it. So which one are you? Give me one or give me a two. Let me know. Are you a one or are you a two? One or two, one or two. 
Oops, this looks like I got stuck here. I hope I'm still live. Am I still live? I hope I'm still live. I wonder if it's just my phone. Just make sure. Hold on, guys. I just want to make sure that I'm still live. Okay, I think I am. Or maybe I'm not. Hold on. Okay, let me know if I'm still live. Like, what, what do you see? Oh, no, okay, we're good. Okay, I'm good. All right, because I was like, holy crap, because my alarm keeps going off. I get these bedtime alarms that basically say, you know, you need time for you to go to bed. <laughs> okay, so let me know. I just want to make sure that I am still, you should see which state that you're in. So I just want to make sure that we're good on that. Okay. Hold on, my apologies. I just like, I feel like I'm locked up there. Okay, we're good. All right, here we go. All right, moving on, moving on. Okay, so those um, sides, option one and two, will also bring on different states of emotion, right? Which is side one is stress, anxiety, fear, guilt, frustration, obsession, jealousy. Option two, happiness, hope, ease, confidence, control, pride. I'm just proud. I feel good, right? Okay. So I'm just going to share. This is me. Now, mind you, my party in years started when I was 14, but I'm just sharing that 1996. <laughs> so that's me standing on a chair. Woo! It wasn't a choga party, but I was certainly acting like it, right? And so um, I was a personal trainer, diehard weekend warrior, uh, was perfect through the week, would fall off the wagon on the weekends, party hardy, go to Taco Bell. Um, I lived the exercise more, eat less model. You know, as you can see, there I am drinking my beer and then going to the gym, like, oh, I got to work this shit off. So I literally spent half my life in the vicious cycle. I was on side one. This was me, side one for years and years and years until 2016 when I finally declared, like, I need to stop this. I found that I had a thyroid issue and I was like, okay, I got to figure this out. And hence the reason why this whole thing was born because I became obsessed with figuring this shit out. And then when I recognized that I was probably personally responsible for my thyroid issue in the third, first place, you know, because of the way that I was living my life, um, was like, okay, well, I need to get a voice out there for all of this stuff, hence becoming a hormonal fat loss coach. And that's when the Metabolism Reboot Academy was born, right? So today, Metabolism and Hormonal Fat Loss Coach. I'm a certified NLP practitioner. I have the amazing privilege of coaching dozens of incredible women. And like you had seen some of them, which was, you know, you've seen Alicia, Deb, Kimmy, you know, I've, I've coached many, many women. And they've all had similar experience. Like this is Kimmy. She's lost 77 pounds. You heard me talk about her earlier. Like, look how incredible she looks. Amazing, right? Incredible. She says, coaching with Kelly and the MRA changed my life. I learned to stop sabotaging every diet I tried and learned how to eat for my body, my personal preferences, and ultimately my hormones. I no longer look at food as the enemy, but as a friend that provides my body fuel. Here she is. She sent me this message here that says that feeling when you have to start dieting again. And the other one says, when, when you add a diet and you think about a MF and cheeseburger <laughs> and she says, I hope that's not me anymore. So Kimmy is free. She's free from all the diet cycle. There's no more diets. There's no more exercise, more eat less for her. You know, it's, it's not even a thought. It's not even a, a way that she even goes reverts back to. Here's Erin. You saw that she had talked about how, um, you know, she can eat her brownies and ice cream and still lose weight. And when I did this presentation, she was at 10 pounds, but this week she is now at 11. And she, you know, posted about how, you know, she's in network marketing and how before she would never, ever, ever consider doing a vendor show. And, you know, she said to say vendor event to me in the past would cause my ears to literally stop hearing you. And I'd already have an excuse before you would even finish telling me about it. The program I am in, which is the Metabolism Reboot Academy, um, and have been posting about isn't for weight loss. 
It has given me the power to see and know my worth, to know I'm strong and I can do what I set my mind to. It has given me the drive to finally say yes to a vendor show. Isn't that awesome? So the thing of it is, is that, like I said, she's walked through the hallway. She now sees her worth. She's over here now. She's, she's changing the way that she lives and operates in her life and in her business. It's going to change everything, okay? So perfectionism keeps you plain small and keeps you from achieving your dreams. And that once again has to do with, well, I'll wait until after the holidays. I'll wait till after the first of the year. I'll wait until after Easter. I'll wait till after voting season. I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. You know, if that sounds like you, there's never going to be the perfect time. You're just procrastinating behind perfectionism. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you just want like, oh, it just has to be the ideal situation. Just gonna wait. And I'm gonna tell you what, you're going to be in the same place in a year from now. You are. If you don't change now, where do you see yourself in six months? It's going to be the same or better yet. Actually, it's going to be worse, to be honest. Not better yet, but to be honest with you, this is what it is. So here's the thing. I shared this too because this is something I hear all the time. And I just kind of chuckle. I know what I got to do. I just have to do it. Okay. Well, if you really knew what to do, you wouldn't be in the situation that you're in. Most people know what to do at first. They just don't know what to do as they go on because they don't understand hormones and metabolism and they don't, you know, they get sucked into being influenced by their naysayers that they've created. They, you know, they get all stressed out about the whole journey of it because they don't have accountability or support, you know? And so this becomes their story that they tell themselves. It becomes their belief and it becomes a fact. But in fact, this is a lie. Most people do not know what to do. They don't, you know, I'm not trying to be an asshole or sound like I'm cocksure, but I've been doing this long enough. And I used to say this to myself that I know exactly that this right here is a lie. And it's just a lie that people continue to tell themselves just to kind of keep scooting on by so that they can avoid the work that really needs to be done. Okay. We already talked about that. All right. So now day three, final one. Three components to overall success. And then I will wrap this up, okay? So this is the three components, okay? Action, consistency. We're gonna go back and accountability, okay? Oh, my alarm keeps going off. Hold on one second, I gotta go back. My alarm keeps going off, hence keeping my... Um, I better just turn that alarm off. Okay, so we're gonna go to action. And we're gonna talk about that for a second. I have to turn off my alarm. My alarm keeps telling me to do something. I'm like, oh my God. Oh, it's telling me to put my electronics down. <laughs> okay, hence I'm in front of the electronics. All right, now, okay, so action. This is what keeps people from achieving their goals is action, is that they're, they're not, stepping into action. They're not actually moving forward. They're just kind of like, oh, I, I know what I gotta do. I just gotta do it. Okay, you know, action is so important. Consistency, being consistent. Most people are consistently inconsistent. Woo, woo, woo. On and off the wagon, on and off the wagon. They're lack like consistency instead of like, you know, how many, how many people that you know that are successful? Do you see them starting on and, you know, like over and over, starting on and off? Do you see them posting stuff on Facebook? I'm going to start such and such on Monday. You know, the people that you admire, the people that you really like, gosh, I wish I was more like them. You know that they are consistent. Once they put their mind to something, they take action and they're consistent. They are not in this phase one to three. They're not in that loop. They're over here. They're just waiting for you to join them. They're over here. They have figured it out. They've done the work. They're over here. This is why you see them. Oh my God, they lost 50 pounds. Oh my God, now they're opening up their own business. Oh my God, now they're a millionaire. Oh my God, now they're this. And oh my God, and now they're that. It's because they're done with phase one to three. They don't want anything to do with that shit. It's not even a thought in their mind. It's not even a place that they even consider. They are over here, folks. Over here. 
And all they're doing is they're focusing on what's next, 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 and next. And it's just like they keep checking off the things, okay, on their bucket list because they are now focused on themselves. They are becoming the next level human, okay? Accountability, it's huge. Oftentimes when you don't have accountability or somebody checking in on you or you checking in with somebody, it can be an issue. Some people don't need it, but I can tell you this 99.9% .9 in my opinion, need accountability to some degree, at least for a certain amount of time. Okay. So results are a byproduct from being loyal to the commitments that you make to yourself. Let me say that one more time. Results are a byproduct from being loyal to the commitments that you have made to yourself. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? Because when we stop and we start over and we do all that shit, we are not being loyal to ourselves. We are not keeping our word. We are not sticking to the plan. We are not, we're not, you know, um, we are, you know, people say, well, I feel like I let myself down. Well, you did because you didn't stick to your word. You, you know, that whole thing, mean what you say and say what you mean. Okay. So here's some things that I just want to share with you. Planning. It's an effective tool. Okay. And it helps to, we just read it. An effective plan clarifies and focuses on the top priorities. Okay. Actions needed to achieve the vision. Hold on. I skipped something here. Yeah. And actions needed to achieve the vision. Okay. Control and choices is what ultimately align your daily actions with the critical types of actions in your plan. Measurement, you have to have tools of measurement. They provide comprehensive feedback necessary for informed decision making. If one of my clients is not getting results, do you think that I just have her keep doing and what she's doing? Hell no, we tweak and we adjust, but we would never know if we didn't have these certain measurement tools set in place. Time use, using your time with clear intention is a must. You have to make sure that you are using your time wisely. It is something you will never get back. It goes by quick too. Accountability is ultimately ownership. It is a character trait, it's a life stance, a willingness to own actions and results regardless of the circumstances. Commitment, keeping your promise to others, build strong relationships, not naysayers. And I'm gonna to talk to you about that in just a second. And keeping promises to yourself builds character, esteem, and success. What I mean by naysayers, what does that mean? It's the people that are watching you because they are expecting you to do what you've done in the past. You have shown up by not following through continuously. So then you wonder why nobody is supportive when you want to start something new or when you say, hey, I'm going to start a new business. They're like, oh, okay, yeah, right. Like, like you're just going to do what you do whenever you start a new diet every other week. You're never going to follow through. You don't stick to shit. You're showing people that you are not committed. I'm just being honest. I'm just telling you that your habits with the way that you are treating yourself and your body is affecting your life and other aspects and the way that people view you. I don't know about you, but I want to be viewed as somebody that, hey, when she says she's going to do something, she does it. Not, oh, yeah, here we go again for the 10,000th time. Part of what I do in my coaching is I help people also to retrain their naysayers because that is part of the process too. That is a big reason why people start over is because they don't want to hear people's negative stuff. Okay, we'll see. You know what I mean? And so they, they give up because they feel unsupported and then they keep starting over and the same behaviors keep happening. Okay. Greatness in the moment. Now, here's the thing. The results are not the attainment of greatness, but simply the confirmation of it. So meaning what I'm trying to say here is that when you, when you achieve, let's say even a small goal, it's just a confirmation that all of these practices and all of these things that you are following is working and that it is just confirmation that you're doing the right thing, that you're moving in the right direction. So I get this question a lot. What do you do? 
I, you know, uh, sometimes I'll get this message. I think you can help me, but I'm not exactly sure what it is that you do. Well, I kind of do a lot of things. You know, I have a signature program, which is the Metabolism Reboot Academy. I also have a program which, call, which is called the Power of Three. Um, I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm a macro coach. I can help people with macros if they want to break down their eating very uh, precisely with protein, carbs, and fats. Those are macros. I'm also an NLP coach, neuro-linguistic programming coach. I'm a tapping practitioner. I'm a life success coach. So I have all of these things that I can help you with. I have a lot of these tools. Okay, so I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but my signature program is the MRA, which is what you see me um, put out there a lot because the Metabolism Reboot Academy, it's a group orientation program. Therefore, it's more cost-effective, but it's power-packed with a lot of good stuff, okay? As you see, you, you know, you've seen the proof, right? So I help women. I, I specialize in women, but I do have male clients as well. Not for the academy, but for like macro coaching, but women like macro coaching too. But I help women to balance their hormones so they can lose body fat, have more energy and curb cravings. In addition to that, the byproduct is I help them change their life. I help them change their lifestyle. So the how, how I do this has a lot to do with, you know, the method that I use in my programs and the steps along the way that we take in order to get there. So we layer changes and things, right? Maybe some of you have actually even seen the behind the scenes, uh, maybe in one of my emails where I have shown you under the hood of my actual member portal for my MRA. So this right here is my signature program. It actually starts on Tuesday. So this is a five week program. Um, early bird rate ends tonight. So if you're interested in that, make sure that you message me so we can chat about it and see if it's the right fit for you. Um, it's five weeks. You get live coaching calls with me. You have messaging privileges, meaning that you're able to contact me at any time. I'm like your person. Um, you will become the non-dieter. I will help you to balance your hormones. I will help you with the nutrition that will encourage fat loss. There is also a Facebook community that comes along with this. And you get me at all times, like I said. You also get my tapping program. Okay, I teach you how to tap. Tapping helps to give a voice, the, the fear, uh, excuse me, a voice to the fear that's going on in the back of your mind. It's very good for anxiety. It's very good for, you know, like if you're confused, it's very good for, you know, rewiring those pathways. It has a lot to do with the energy meridians in your body. And it helps you to, you know, refocus, realign, come present helps with your decision-making, okay? And I also am a hypnotherapist. So with that said, I give some hypnosis audios to help you along with your journey as well. So that is my signature program. Um, I also, like I said, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Very, like I have a couple of clients who came to me that are like, okay, weight loss really wasn't what they needed, but what they needed was to be healthier and feel good. And the aesthetics will come along with it, but they needed me to help them because they knew that I had an understanding of the body, the hormones, and all the science behind all that so that they did not have to go on a Google search to try and figure out what the hell was going on with them. Okay. So nutrition, macronutrition, mindset, NLP, entrepreneurial as well as hypnosis. So if somebody just wants to come to me, you know, and say, Hey, I'm really having a difficult time with quitting smoking then I can give them a hypnosis package. I can do one-on-one -on -one with them <laughs> and do hypnosis with them. I can also do breakthrough sessions. NLP has a lot to do with releasing limiting beliefs and old stories. And so, you know, I actually had a client say to me once, we did a, an, an hour session and she messaged me a few days later and she says, you know, I was just telling my husband how that one hour session doing that little breakthrough that we did, she says, it did more for me in, in one hour than all the years of therapy that I had been in. It's the power of the subconscious mind that we're able to tap into. Okay. So when I say entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial, I just mean in the sense that um, if you're an entrepreneur and you find that you're, you're getting unbalanced where you're putting your business and your family and all these things, and you're becoming second and you're gaining weight and you're getting out of control and you're not doing the things that are important to you. I 
you know, help you with, with all that too. Um, but one-on-one -on -one coaching also comes with an all access pass to all of my courses. So meaning that if somebody does sign up one-on-one -on -one with me, they do get access to the MRA. They do get access to my power three. Um, you know, so it's more of like a all encompassing kind of thing. So the power three is a fat loss formula. Um, this is a really awesome program. It's a DIY, meaning that it's a do it yourself. You don't have me checking in on you. I give you the information. Um, it has to do with three pillars, which is nutrition, exercise, and supplementation. And so that's what the power three stands for. Okay. So that's my DIY course. Okay. So I had, um, put this out there, um, that if you were interested, um, in, either one of those that you could fill out a discovery form. Um, and it's just kellydunlap.com forward slash discovery or kellydunlap.com forward slash coaching. Discovery is probably, um, you know, I, I get email notifications when people, you know, fill out these forms. But if you're interested in any type of coaching, one of the best ways is to just notify me through Messenger, um, you know, and to say, hey, I'm interested. This is what I need. This is what I'm looking for. And then we can decide together what is the best fit for you. Now, um, I know some of you have been keeping an eye on the Metabolism Reboot Academy. Some of you are like, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. Well, maybe this is your time. The program actually launches on Tuesday. The early bird rate ends tonight. Um, I do also help you by giving payment plans if you you feel that you need it. I don't want somebody to not get the help that they need just because they feel that they're limited by the amount of maybe cash flow that they have or what have you. So don't hesitate, reach out, you know, and I will work with you. You'd be very surprised at some of the things that I might say. So, you know, if it's something that you're interested in, you know, please message and we can go from there. So my friend, I hope that you found this informative and valuable. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you so much for believing in me. And I am going to sign off for the night so that you can enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And my alarm has been telling me for the last half hour that I need to shut down my electronics and start getting ready for bed. Because <laughs> I have to set alarms. And this is something that I teach my clients too as well is that you know we get lost in we can get lost in this electronics and then the next thing you know it's like an hour or two later and you know then we can't sleep right so have a wonderful night let me know if you have any questions once again the, the doors to the academy will close tomorrow night but my early bird rate ends tonight Okay, so you will save a significant amount of money. So if you are interested, make sure that you message me and we can talk it out. All right, have a wonderful night, my friend. We'll see you soon.